So let's talk about how we can update read models using domain events. But first we need to take a moment to build up a simple event dispatcher and get used to how it sends events to its event listeners. While it's entirely possible to use off-the-shelf solutions for this, we're going to build a very simplistic version from scratch so that we can make sure that we understand the core concepts. We're not going to use anything like containers to lazy load objects or to be able to resolve the same instances of the dispatcher across the application. Those are just features and optimizations and you can implement those if you find a need. So here is our basic dispatcher. We add listeners to it and then they get held in the array. When we dispatch an event, we loop through the listeners calling handle on each one of them, and that's all. So when we see code like this, which is just an aggregate raising events, the events get dispatched, and you know it's just looping through the listeners and allowing each of them to handle the events that were raised. Okay, so now we have an idea how the dispatcher can take the event and then distribute it to a bunch of listeners. So let's go back to the aggregate flow for a moment. When we express our intent to an aggregate, it determines if the intent will result in a state change. If so, a domain event is raised. This process is the process through which we change the state of our system using events. Once the domain events are persisted, then the state of our system has been modified forever. Now, what does the future of those domain events look like? How will these events be used that will translate to business value? First, we use domain events to reconstruct the state of an aggregate. This is important because an aggregate is a process designed in such a way as to ensure immediate consistency. It guards the business rules and verifies that right now there is no breaking of those rules. Everything we're doing is in accordance to the business rules and it's accurate right now immediately. The aggregate can't guard those business rules to ensure consistency if it doesn't understand the current state of the process that it's in if it doesn't know the current aggregate state. By applying domain events to the aggregate, we arrive at that current state. And when we express an intent to the aggregate, it'll be able to make the right decisions regarding what is and isn't allowed so that we can update the state of the system in a way that retains consistency. When domain events are raised, they're distributed through an event dispatcher. This is the primary method through which domain events influence our business. Event handlers, also called listeners, are given the option to respond to the occurrence of the events. Any number of outcomes are possible from the event listeners. Common examples include triggering the delivery of email, registering people to services such as newsletter lists, and many more behaviors than can be listed here. Right now, we're going to focus on one kind of behavior that comes from event handlers. We want to update the state of our read models. In our business, we have need of an order listing. It's a listing of all orders that we can filter and search. An example use case might be to look up an order by the customer's email and let them know the state of the payments that we've received. Our team has decided that due to the requirements for this read model, we'll implement it using a relational database. When it comes to filtering, sorting, and searching, SQL is a very powerful and mature tool. In the end, we'll want a relation that looks like this. We have the customer IDs, names, emails, the status of the order, how much money we've received in payment, and a simple list of the products that have been ordered. With a read model like this, we should be able to meet our requirements, have a very performant interface, and do so using well-known tooling that anyone could maintain without much trouble. A read model is updated by an event listener reacting to domain events that are relevant to that model. The event listener is going to update a projection of the current state of the system. Our event store is a historical timeline of all system state changes. But our read model is a projection of the now. It doesn't communicate the previous state of the system. It communicates the state of the system at the moment of the most recent domain event received. Let's create an event listener that will project our state into our read model. We're going to call our projection the order listing. So let's just call this listener the order listing projector. Down the road, you'll probably want to use interfaces for your listeners, events, and so on, but for now we're going to intentionally include as few moving parts as possible. Our listener needs to have a handle method that will accept a domain event. Handle will receive every single domain event that's sent to our dispatcher. Some will be important to our read model, some we'll just ignore. So let's switch on the event type and determine the correct behavior for each. The life cycle of our order includes five types of change. When it's placed, when it's confirmed, when a payment's received, when it's completed, and when it's fulfilled. Now we can react to the events. Let's start at the beginning of the order lifecycle, the order being placed. 
Let's take a look at the order was placed event. This is how the event looked in previous examples. In those examples, we never captured information about the customer. We just assumed that the customer already existed as part of a separate process. This event refers to a specific order, a specific customer, and has a listing of products that the customer is ordering. However, for this example, we're going to use a different model. We won't have customers exist as part of a separate process. We're going to recognize customers as data points during the order process. So we're using a new order was placed event. During checkout, the customer leaves their name and email along with a list of products that they'd like to purchase. To simplify the code examples and stay focused on the goals of the project, I made the decision to use what is currently the most popular PHP web development framework, Laravel, to simplify the implementation of a number of components so that we can stay on scope. It's not important to be familiar with Laravel. I simply wanted to show executable examples without developing many additional abstraction layers from the ground up. Here, we're using it to build and execute SQL queries. The query execution will be implemented using a straightforward builder syntax that will protect us from some security issues, etc. Here are some examples of inserts, updates, and decrementing a number. You should feel free to use your own preferred way to execute SQL queries. Now let's step through each state change and figure out how to update our order listing model to reflect the state changes. First, our order becomes placed. This is the step in which our order changes state from nothing into existence. Our projector will receive the order was placed event, and when it's done, the read model should list the new order with the correct status and details. Next in the life cycle is the confirmation of an order. Very little happens in the confirmation stage. Our employee simply marks the order as confirmed and the event is dispatched. In order to update our read model appropriately, we simply need to set the order status to confirmed. Now, each time our customer makes a payment, the payment was received event is raised. So we can simply increase the numeric value for the payment made by the amount of the payment. Once an order is completed, all of the funds have been received and we can mark the status as completed. Finally, when we ship the order, the status is marked as fulfilled. As the order transitions through the states in its life cycle, the projector keeps the read model up to date. This projector essentially executes five different kinds of queries. Each are basic insert and updates. And this is our finished projector. This event listener will respond to the events that relate to the order life cycle and update a read model that we'll use to assess the current state of the orders in the system. These events can come through a message bus and don't have to be all done on the same system. You can have many different projectors living on many different systems, many different projections on many different servers. Because all of these responsibilities can now easily be split apart, the amount of gains you receive in performance can be tremendous. You can make the decisions about what the right tool for the job are and easily implement one solution for one context and another for another resulting in a tremendous amount of flexibility. Up to this point, we've been using switch statements when we want different behavior for different events, but it's possible to implement this kind of behavioral switch in many different ways. For example, this is the same projector using a base class that may provide a higher quality developer experience. It's easy to imagine how many might find it more easy to understand and extend using this approach compared to using the switch statement. And this is only one example of optimizations that may suit your values or use cases. You shouldn't feel restricted to using the techniques shown in these examples. The purpose of these examples is to illustrate the way that things work and the purpose behind them. You should feel free to implement your own solutions that match your values and that match the needs of your system. This example uses a relational database for a read model, and that's familiar to most web developers. But you can imagine that for other systems, like perhaps MongoDB or Elasticsearch, you would have a projector that is shaped identically, but simply makes calls to those systems instead of executing SQL queries. Thanks to CQRS, it's easy to have a wide diversity of read models, both in content and in the media used. Relational, document stores, in-memory projections, etc. are all easily implemented and distributed because all we have to do is know, per event, how to update the state of the model. The often flaunted and then ignored phrase, use the right tool for the job, suddenly becomes relevant.